Okay, so, so how do we do our reading? Uh, we take our chip that we prepared, and so we've, we've patterned our proteins, we've delivered our nanoparticles through these microfluidic uh, uh, devices. Uh, you can see these squares. We've used very high concentrations of everything so that you don't really need Raman spectroscopy to know that there's an interaction here. But the proteins are on the surface, and then we run uh, the nanoparticles uh, di or, or orthogonal to that. And so where the lines intersect, we get interactions. And so here's visibly, this is just a, an optical micrograph where you can see the, the, the cross points of our microfluidic channels. If we take a spectrum in between the spots, we don't see anything. If we take a spectrum on the spot, uh, we see the signal from our label. Um, and, and they're located at this spot simply due to the, um, due to the, uh, oh right, I was wondering what that was due to the antibody-antigen interaction. And so our, our antigens have been labeled with this nanoparticle, and we can use this signal for detection. Um, in terms of how, how, how low can we go, um, uh, here's a series of spectra for different concentrations of the nanoparticles. We've done this with different concentrations of the antigen as well. Uh, as far as we can figure, we can detect approximately 80 80 particles in, in our laser spot, which is, which is very, very low levels. And in a sandwich assay, uh, we've gone down to about 40 picomolar um, uh, for detection of an antigen that's sandwiched in between two antibodies. So it's, it's starting to approach uh, the lower levels of, of, uh, of ELISA. Um, in order to do parallel detection on a single chip, Right, this is, this is a photograph of what's known as a microarray, which is a fairly mature technology that's been developed over the last 10 years. Each one of these spots is, is a DNA-DNA interaction that's detected by fluorescence. And, and so how do we convert our signal into that? Uh, we do what's called a, a Raman mapping experiment, where we simply take a spectrum across our chip at every point and then convert that uh, series of spectra into uh, an image or a map where the map, the contrast in the map is plotted um, uh, one of the signals of, of our spectra. Okay, as you can imagine, this is fairly slow, but there are uh, instrument there is instrumentation out there that's starting to speed up this mapping uh, 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 to the point where it's 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 a half hour to do the to do the whole map. And, and, and so this then would be would be the the map of our interactions based on uh, this uh, surface enhanced Raman detection. Um, and one of the things I mentioned was the ability to detect multiple things um, on a single chip. And to do that, you need different labels. You need different signals. And, and so uh, we've created some chemistry where we would make a mixed monolayer on the particle. So two different molecules on the same particle, where one molecule is used to conjugate the protein. Uh, the other molecule is used to generate our signal. And these are all commercially available cheap molecules that, that you can buy. And, and you just mix them all together and, and you centrifuge the nanoparticles, resuspend them, and, and, uh, and, and, and you're done. Um, and, and so a variety of different molecules can be used to generate different signals. These are the individual spectra of those four molecules. Again, this is Raman intensity as a function of wave number or frequency of, of the light. Each one of these peaks corresponds to a vibration of those molecules. And, and they're kind of complicated spectra. There's lots of peaks. Uh, a lot of the peaks overlap, but because the bands are so narrow, uh, you can pick bands out that are, that are in some of the spectra and not in any of the other ones. And, and so you can use bands that are located in each spectra for the signal of that particular molecule in order to do um, um, multiple detections. Okay, and just an example of that, it's not very multiple, it, it goes from one to two. Um, but uh, this is our two antigen immunoassay, and, and um, so we have two different anti anti antibodies on the surface. We expose that to two different antigens. They're captured by the appropriate antibody, and then we expose the whole chip to a mixture of these nanoparticles. One set of nanoparticles contains a specific antibody and its own label. Another set of nanoparticles contains a different antibody and a different label, and they go where they're supposed to based on the specific interactions of the, of the antibodies and, and the antigens. And then we collect a single map of the surface, and if we plot all the intensity, uh, we see all the spots. If we plot the intensity of a, of, of a band that is specific to one of our labels, we see uh, one series of spots. And if we plant, uh, plot the intensity of the band according to, uh, corresponding to the other label, we see the other series. And so we're detecting both of these uh, uh, antigens on the same chip 
and, and, and obviously you can see where this can be extended. We've actually done up to six right now, but I don't have that data in, in this talk. And the last uh, slide that uh, I'll show you is some recent work that we've been doing with, with different shapes of particles. And, and uh, the theory predicts that various shapes will give you uh, more intense Raman signals. And so what we've been working on recently are, are gold nano rods. And so in this case, we have a, a rod that's about 30 nanometers wide and about 60 nanometers long, 60, 65 nanometers long. Um, and so they're not the spherical nanoparticles. No, they're, they're longer. And, and this gives you just an indication of how much more sensitive the rods are relative to the, uh, uh, to the, nano, to the, to the spherical particles. Uh, these are, are three different spectra. The top two are for nano rods with different aspect ratios, um, just different sizes of nano rods. The blue spectrum on the bottom is, are the spherical nanoparticles. And as far as we can control it, uh, the amount of nanoparticles in this assay, the conditions are, are very similar. And so we're kind of comparing apples to apples here. And, and, and these are, this is a plot of the intensity as a function of particle surface density, how many are on the surface. And the blue curve, the blue line is for the, the, the spherical particles. And these very steep curves are for the nano rods. Um, which shows that we have much higher sensitivity per, per surface density of, of, of nano rod relative to the nanoparticle. And so that's what we're working on uh, uh, right now. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop there and um, hopefully I didn't go over time and I'll answer any questions. <laughs>